Hello viewers, thank you for joining me. Usually, when I review movies, it's as a last resort, I ran out of time to finish the series I was going to review sort of thing, but the last Evolution Digimon movie had been on my list for a while, and as soon as I saw the trailer for this movie, I knew I wanted to do them together. Mamoru Hosoda is a pretty big name as far as directors go. To be honest, I still haven't seen a lot of the movies that really made him famous, but works of his that I have seen include the original Digimon movie and Summer Wars. I know when I reviewed Summer Wars a few years ago, I mentioned that I saw a lot of similarities between the two, and then I saw the trailer for Bell and what looked like another movie about a virtual world possibly growing too powerful and endangering the real world. And I just had to see for myself whether Hosoda had really made essentially the same movie for a third time. Belle is the story of Suzu, a high schooler who's shy and meek, but very talented musically. That talent was inspired by her mother, who died when she was young, trying to save another little girl during some sort of storm or flash flood. The summary I read described her as a girl growing up in the age of social media, and that's probably all that needs to be said to explain the self-esteem issues she's grown into by the time we meet her as a teenager. Even trailing all the way back to her mother's death, when she couldn't have been more than five, her funeral scene cuts to a bunch of scornful comments, judging her mother for trying to save a stranger's child when it meant abandoning her own, so it's not hard to see why she's so beaten down when the story begins, and she's lost the ability to sing at all. The stress of trying makes her sick. But then Suzu signs up for you, the most advanced social media slash virtual reality platform in this universe. Everyone is given a randomly generated avatar, and of course our main character is depicted as a beautiful woman when most people get these little fish creatures, but I won't linger on that. Being anonymous like this allows her to sing again, and she quickly takes off as one of the most popular users on the site. This popularity also comes with its fair share of haters, too, but for the first time, Suzu is able to power through the negativity without letting it bother her too much. One day, her concert is interrupted by another famous user, known as The Beast, he holds the record for having the most consecutive wins in the martial arts arena, but has gained notoriety for how brutal he tends to be, refusing to stop until the other user's data is destroyed. His avatar is noteworthy for the bruises patterning his back, and Suzu's particularly horrified when Yu's self-appointed police force goes after him, with a weapon that could strip away his mask and reveal what he really looks like. While her fans might be egging them on, out for blood, such a thing is Suzu's worst nightmare as well, which sets her on a path of trying to get close to the beast herself, learn what makes him act this way, and possibly help him if she can. So, in response to my initial suspicions, Belle isn't a copy of Summer Wars. You may be powerful and impressive, but it stays within the bounds of being a virtual world, in hindsight, it seems pretty obvious they were going for something Beauty and the Beast inspired instead. I don't want to get into spoilers here, as this movie is still pretty new. Really new for what I usually review. I'm planning to stick to general overview sorts of opinions. This movie looked and sounded great. There are a lot of characters who are awkward characters, but the acting for those uncomfortable moments was always good okay with one exception, but we'll get to that. I watched this one dubbed, and song translations also have the potential to be really stilted and awkward, but it worked here. And maybe it's because these other things were so good that it makes me want to really sing this movie's praises. Praises that I didn't really feel from my reaction to the story, to be honest other than one or two practical things that absolutely only worked out because this is a work of fiction that needed a happy ending. I think the storyline with the Beast was pretty good, the heartwarming sort of tale that you want to see in a story set in a virtual world. 
how the internet can be a great place that allows strangers to connect and find support they might be missing from the rest of their lives. This feeling is dampened a little, though, by how much the rest of the movie focuses on how random strangers will use any excuse to tear someone down, particularly when they're somewhere that allows them to be even kind of anonymous. And I'm not saying that's not realistic, but any sort of lesson about strangers coming together for a common goal ranged from being totally non-existent to just not really leaving an impact when the movie was going for that sort of thing. And a part of that might be because Suzu does have such a strong support group in the real world. At first, it seems like it's just Hiroka, the outspoken, tech-savvy best friend who's kind of estranged from her own parents and their high expectations of her. These two girls fit together really well, and I enjoyed their friendship. But as the movie continues, that inner circle grows and grows, and not because Suzu's shown to be getting more confident over time and reaching out to these people. They feel like friends who were always around, we just didn't see them at first. She and her dad have grown distant, but he clearly really cares about her. Her mom's old group of friends has started up a choir that she may barely participate in, but they're always reaching out to her, trying to encourage her. And there was a pretty sweet moment near the end where they reveal that they knew she was Belle all along. She doesn't seem to be on terrible terms with her classmates, even if she does only have the one really close friend. At least, I didn't see any evidence she was being bullied. The one time there is a misunderstanding that gets her name out there on the gossip vine, she has no trouble talking to people to correct the rumors. Those rumors were about her possibly being involved with Shinobu, the star athlete, most popular boy in school, who of course is a childhood friend, and who was also the one exception to the voice acting, by the way. And I'm not sure it was even the actor who was at fault, necessarily. Shinobu had absolutely zero personality, and it made some scenes that I think were supposed to be serious actually kind of hilarious. And the final nail in that coffin was Ruka, the beautiful, admired, most popular girl in school, who Suzu is also apparently on pretty good terms with. At least, she doesn't seem to find it that strange when Ruka suddenly wants to hang out and talk about their crushes and whatnot. I know self-esteem issues aren't always rational, but this picture of her life kind of undermines the tale they're trying to tell. That Suzu feels lesser for not being popular or traditionally beautiful, but why should she? No one seems to treat her badly for it. So when she does finally regain her confidence at the end, it kind of just feels like, well, it's about time. Belle wasn't awful. Some things about it were really beautiful. The story just didn't land the way I felt it was supposed to. I wouldn't discourage anyone from seeing it, but I do have to say that if this sort of idea sounds moving and interesting to you, I'd really recommend checking out The Anthem of the Heart. It's one of my favorite anime movies ever, and there are actually a lot of similarities. The main character's gone completely mute after her own childhood trauma, but a class project slowly gets her to open up to a new group of friends, who help her finally overcome her past by putting on a musical for the school festival. In that light, I guess we've looped back around to the beginning. I have seen Belle but better in another movie. It just wasn't Summer Wars it ended up being super similar to. And now, with even recommendations out of the way, thank you for watching.